Hi everyone, today I'm doing something a little bit different from our journaling and mixed media. I'm going to do something similar to this, a dragon eye. And the things that you will need is some kind of a flat back a glass stone or there are all kinds of epoxy plastic thing, thingies like this. They have adhesive in the back. So this also can work and there are all kinds of other flat back glass stones like that they sell at the cheap store for a um, fish tanks. So that's another <laughs> a way to go about it. So some kind a, of glass stone a, or plastic for the eye and you need some kind of air dry clay i'm using foam clay i will explain why i prefer this one not uh, this particular brand it's just something i picked from the cheap store but uh, why i prefer to use foam clay and there are, i also have this is the house brand of the cheap store but this is more like dust and i prefer not to use it I, again i will explain in a minute all all things and I also have all kinds of black permanent markers some regular felt pens and we need some paper and parchment paper so I'm uh, taking this aside and first you you start with the eye because this will a uh, by this you will decide the size that you need to do and i always say make a template if you have this glass stone make a template see how big you want it to be like if this is the eye then you decide if you want it this big or this big it's easier to decide a uh, how you want to work with it and uh, the same thing if you have smaller a uh, glass stone or this epoxy um, thingy <laughs> okay so we are going to start with this and as i said i prefer to do some kind of a template Let's see, maybe I'll go like this and I'm going to cut it so I will have a base that will guide me in uh, making the eye. That's it. So I have got a base. Now I want to uh, do uh, this eye all kinds of ways to go about it easiest way is to use felt pens you can also use um, uh, colored pencils you can use watercolors you can use painty papers you can, <laughs> whatever you want because you can even take something interesting like starry night and pick a place that you like like so I'm not sure if you can get it because uh, it's shiny and there is a glare but you can pick all kinds of stuff and have fun with it creating a dragon eye like I have here all kinds that I've made in the past so let's do one here so I'm beginning with just taking a permanent marker and going around my stone this is just sketch paper nothing special about it and the way I like to go about it is start by I'm taking now some grayish a felt pen with this is dual tip this is the uh, smaller one and just going around 
like so. Now this can take a while. Another way, there are so many ways to go about it and I'm going to show you all kinds. And I can also, let's do another one just so you will see how easy it is. I can also decide to go like this, which is quicker, and take another color. And another color. Now felt pens are water reactive so I can take a brush with water and go over and it will activate the felt pen and blend them together. And I need to wait for this to dry and then I can continue and add more details. Like when this is dry, I can do the center and do this kind of a reptile pupil. Or I can decide that I want something different like, like this. Also uh, fits with a dragon eye. So lots of options to go uh, with this. And a lot of time when this is dry, I will also then add detail, more details and do this kind of work on top of it. So it will be more, with more details. <laughs> here, I, another example here I used and I had a, like a crackle stamp and I just printed it on the, the colored background. So I got more like vein details. Hope you can see it. <laughs> so that's what we've got here. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. Now let's start uh, talking about the clay. Why am I using this? Because this, even after it dries, it has some kind of flexibility and it's easier to work with. Now this is a, a something I picked at the cheap store. They are selling it for for kids next to the thing that called slime that kids play with. But this is foam clay and it's used a lot in props for a, movies and theater because it's light but when you are finishing uh, making your the shape that you want, it doesn't look like it's made from foam. It looks like any, everything and anything else. And what's good about it that it's light, so you can do large things uh, without being too heavy. So just for example, I used the foam clay and I used this that is similar to dust in a silicon mold. These two are uh, from the foam clay. And as you can see, they have some flexibility, which I really like. And I can even trim if I have something that is not quite right. This is from this. Now it's nice, but if I want to bend it a little or, or something, it will just break because it's because it's more like almost like a plaster um, so I prefer to use this which has a little bit more flexibility okay so let's see let's give it a <laughs> quick Someone asked me why am I not filming when I'm using a heat tool and I said that I kind of hate in other people's videos the sound of um, the heat tools or a blow dry. 
so I try not to use them in my videos but for a short time it's okay so I've got the center I can add more details all around like so and of course as I said you don't have to do something like this you can pick any kind of pattern paper or your some of your painty paper find something interesting and use it as the background to, for the eye okay so once i'm satisfied i'm going to use some glue i prefer to use silicone glue but it doesn't have to be just make sure that whatever you are using uh, if it's water reactive or not water reactive if it's uh, other stuff depends w what it <laughs> like you don't want to put a glue that will react with what you have underneath and ruin what you've done so just pay attention what you are using to glue your uh, glass to your paper and what will react with the glue depending on the glue you are using so now I am just going to cut this it's not dry yet I can still feel the stone moving but I'm just going to keep on I'm using um, nail scissors because they are just easier to work with because they have a curve and it's just easier okay so once you have the eye you can uh, start building the rest of the eye <laughs> okay I uh, do I want to use this one that I've just done or do I want to use another one let's use this one don't know why just want to use this one gluing it here in the middle and now I'm just going to take a piece of this I really like to work with it it's a really a um, fun material and I'm just squishing it a little bit and I'm going to do, try and make a shape that will correspond with the shape of the eye. I'm building the uh, up the top eyelid like so. And most of the time I will just Put it down that's why I have the template and I will just make it fit my template like so and now I'm pushing it until I'm satisfied because I don't want it to cover the whole uh, eyeball <laughs> okay so I've got the top eye eyelid and now I will take another piece and again doing the same thing
Now, the dragon eye, you can do whatever you want with it. You can decorate covers, if it's the art journal, notebooks, whatever. You can make it into a pendant. I will show you in a minute. I've done another one here and I've made a hole here so it can become a pendant. I have a few nephews that are into all kinds of stuff like Harry Potter and uh, dragons and dungeons and so I keep making dragon eyes and <laughs> wands and whatnot. So one of them asked for a pendant. Okay, so once again, I'm just putting it here on my template and deciding until where I want it to cover the eyeball. Now you can also make the base if you want from the clay whatever clay you are using it's just a easier for me a, to use a piece of paper again it's just sketch paper nothing to it okay so here is the eye let's close this finished with it for now at least and now I want to uh, print some to make indentations that will look like scales and the best thing that I found is this is I don't know if it's for carving or sculpturing or whatever but it has like a part of a circle and it's it, really uh, easy to make the scales now if you don't have any tool like this the only thing that i thought that could work is use something round like the cap of a felt pen and print it only part ways so you won't have the whole circle you only will have part of the circle now the way i'm going to do the markings I'm going to show it to you how I am doing it. I'm doing it like this and then I'm going like this. Okay, so that's how it looks a little more like scales. And now I'm just going to go about it like so. Maybe I can get it closer just so you will see. very very easy nothing to it of course you can decide the, uh, on the size you want if you want bigger scales if you want smaller if you want more a uh, space in between up to you what feels right to you So now I'm just going to go all around it's not an exact science I'm just spacing them and making them not symmetrical best explanation that I can give you <laughs> now this is a little bit too much so I'm pushing it
okay so you got what I'm doing now I'm going to continue doing uh, the scales and I'll be back next I will uh, will go on to coloring this needs to uh, dry overnight uh, most uh, air dry clays it's uh, just a uh, <laughs> once again got stuck uh, it's just uh, better to leave them overnight to dry so I'll be back okay moving on to <laughs> just a uh, painting I'm using acrylic paint you can use whatever colors you want I'm starting with black and going inside with a fine brush just so I can get in here now you can use one color for the whole thing or a uh, several colors it's really up to your imagination and as you can see I've started with the black and I'm thinking of doing black here and then going into the blue towards the outside So now I can take a little bit of the blue and I'm mixing it with the black and going inside all the details. don't know how much of it you can see right now because I'm blending the two colors but there is a difference the only thing is that make sure you are getting inside all the details like so so here towards the outside it's mostly blue okay So really easy, you can use metallics, you can use whatever you feel like the eye should look like, dipping again into the black, using it here close to the eyeball. And once again, picking up the blue and blending into the black.
Okay, I'm going to continue uh, painting it and wait for it to dry and then I'll come back. Okay, so now for the highlights, which I use metallics. Now, there are all kinds of ways uh, to go about it. The best way, if you've got a wax paste, gilding wax, or rub and buff, this, that's the best option, but it's expensive. I've got here a wax paste silver. This is Pent, pent Art. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, brands out there and most of them are expensive but if you have it that's the best next best best thing is to use a acrylic paint i have here silver acrylic paint and a brush now you need to almost make it uh, dry and then you brush gently on top and a lot of times you will need a second layer because it's uh, the metallics are not completely opaque so that's another way to go about it you can hardly see it but it's there and it only picks the ridges and doesn't get into the inside so that's the next thing and another option i, I made this a uh, let's say <laughs> waxes uh, these are made there is a video I will put a link below I've made it a few years ago I hardly um, well I use it but it, it just lasts for a long time because you need really small amount each time these are made from oil pastels metallic oil pastels with um, <laughs> <laughs> coconut oil and as I said the video is from a few years ago and I didn't even have a heat tool to melt uh, both uh, things and I I've done what I could have done and that's what I have this is a like a pill dispenser for each day of the week and that I bought it at the cheap store and used it for this and it works the same way as the bot waxes you just put a little bit on your finger like so and you go on top and it picks again the details and this is Here we go it picks the details I don't think you can see the difference between the acrylic paint that I've put here uh, <laughs> the mine a uh, wax that I've made from oil pastels and uh, coconut oil and here is the um, bot a uh, wax paste so that's it that's it's so easy you just pick up the details like so and of course you can decide whatever color you want I could have gone gold I could have gone bronze whatever you like up to your imagination here we go uh, I'm not sure this needs sealing but I always uh, I always do just uh, in case especially when I'm gifting it to someone and so again in terms of sealant it I either use a water a water-based um, varnish or I am spraying it with clear sp spray uh, from a can like so that's another way to go about it. So, this is a pendant for, <laughs> as I said, one of my nephews. I'm going to try and put this uh, jump ring, although I think this one is too small to get in here. So, I need a bigger one. Let's see if I have a 
bigger one. Didn't plan on it, not that it's that important, but let's just finish it. <laughs> Here we go, I've got a bigger one. Okay. Got this. And I'm going to take, this is some kind of a faux leather or suede or whatever. And that's what I was asked and that's what I'm going to make. <laughs> Well, I can just uh, put it through the jump ring, but I think I'll make it like so. And make sure that the jump ring is closed in here, like so. And just for a young nephew. Basically, this is it. <laughs> Here we go. So we've got the pendant. And just if you are wondering about this, uh, in the background is a sample of wallpaper that I, I've just uh, colored with black acrylic paint, went over again with the silver. All of this is just playing again with the clay these are very simple to make it's just making little uh, balls with the clay and then going and punching with stylus uh, in the middle like this so very easy here again i've used this tool to make indentations just to go with the rest of the eye so this is it i hope you liked it <laughs> thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments down below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.